Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Oriental Mark Bolo, and this is Pedro. Here I love sharing anything that sparks my interest. And recently, I've been thinking about how to uh, deconstruct Chinese characters in a fun, engaging, and captivating way, approaching them from a fresh perspective to learn and understand them more quickly and much deeper. And today marks the second episode uh, in this series. Uh, if you haven't caught up on the previous episode, you can click the link on the upper right corner. Um, in last episode, we discussed how Chinese characters are like uh, Tetris blocks or Lego pieces. They're built from several standard components. Um, you can see as shown in these uh, animations. Standard components like these are assembled into individual Chinese characters. Once you recognize these standard components, you can quickly remember the characters and even guess their rough meanings. So don't try to memorize Chinese characters stroke by stroke. Instead, think of them as made of small uh, building blocks, usually two or three that combine to form the uh, full character. This will make learning Chinese way easier. Today, we'll continue to talk about some particularly interesting standard components. These five radicals. Um, we know that in ancient Greek philosophy, it was believed that everything is made up of uh, four elements. Uh, earth, air, water, and fire. And coincidentally, in China, within our own Taoist philosophy, there is a similar concept which holds that the world is composed of five, five basic elements. Uh, Jing, metal, mu, shui, or wood, Shui, water, huo, fire, and tu, earth or soil, known as the five elements theory uh, in Chinese, wu xing shuo. You see the circle chart of these five elements, uh, mutual generation and restriction. It is really beautiful, huh? And elegant. This theory is well known in every household in China. And each of these five uh, basic elements also has their corresponding standard components or so-called radicals. So let's first take a look at Jing Metal. First of all, there's another interesting question. How and why does the character Jing represent metal? As shown in this animation, when Asian Chinese people smelted iron, they would pour, they would pour the melted iron from a container into a casting mold, where it would take, uh, take the shape of Chinese ancient axe. This scene was recorded by this uh, pictographic character, Jing. It is very similar, huh? And later, Jing came to uh, broadly represent all metals, and Jing can also specifically refer to gold. The standard components for Jing metal comes into these two radicals. And the form on the left is the simplified version, while the one on the right is the traditional version. Um, the traditional version is quite intuitive because it hasn't changed. It's directly based on the original um, character, Jing. But how did the simplified version how the simplified radical come about. You see this character evolution spectrum on the left side. This is what Jing looked like in the Brown script, so-called Jing Wen, approximately uh, 3,003 years ago. In the middle left, this is Jing in the seal script, so-called Zhuan Shu, uh, approximately 2,200 years ago. And in the middle right, this is Jing in uh, clerical script, so-called Li Shu, approximately uh, 1,900 years ago, and on the right side, this is Jing in regular script, so-called Kai Shu. And Kai Shu, as the official and standard mainstream writing system, has been in use until today. You can see that these two versions of Jing closely resemble um, this simplified standard component, huh? And that's why the simplified standard component looks the way it does. Oh, by the way, if you are interested in the evolution and development of uh, Asian Chinese characters throughout different dynasties, you can check out these videos of mine. And regarding the meaning, it is very straightforward. Any Chinese character that contains this standard component is uh, to some extent related to metal or gold. For example, let's take a look. Ying, silver. Tong, copper. Ti, iron. Xi, uh, tin. Qian, lead. And Qian, Coins. And you see this page, Asian Chinese coins were made of copper, so money naturally belongs to the metal family. And this copper coin is from Xianfeng period of Qing Dynasty in China. It looks very beautiful, huh? And this one, uh, Jing, mirror. 
Um, in ancient China, mirrors were made of copper as well, and let's appreciate these pictures. And this mirror is very uh, exquisite and elegant, huh? And Zhong Bell. Ancient Chinese bell looks like this, and they were also made of copper resembling a large trumpet. Huh? And Suo Lock. And locks in ancient China were mostly made of bronze, and sometimes uh, silver and gold were also used. Um, normally, they are uh, decoration. It looks very exquisite, huh? Simple and interesting. And a quick recap this page shows the simplified version, and this page shows the traditional version. So, uh, when we look at this standard component uh, from this novel perspective, you will find it much easier and more funny to remember all the characters from this family, huh? And from now on, whenever you see a character with this standard component, you will no longer feel strange, and you can pretty much guess it has something to do with metal or gold. And then, let's look at the next basic element, Mu, tree or wood. As you can see from the image, Mu is also a pictographic character. From the very beginning in the oldest Chinese characters, Mu looked like this. It is very uh, similar to a young sapling. Over time, it evolved uh, into the modern form. And the standard component for Mu just keeps itself. It's easy to see that most characters containing the, this Mu standard component are related to trees or plants or wood. Uh, for example, Shu, a tree. And Ling, a small forest or a grove. Sun, a large forest. Cai, and after, uh, after trees are cut down, uh, then become timber. Ji, machine. As many Asian Chinese machines were made of wood, like looms. And Du, a flower blossom. Li, a plum. Li, a pear. And this page shows the various types of trees. Xin, April cot tree. Shan, dang, redwood. Song pine tree, Bai cypress tree, Nan nanmu tree, Duan linden tree, Xiang oak tree, Feng maple tree, Hua birch tree, and some other interesting characters contain this wood standard component. But you can see these characters shows a mark at the root of the of a tree. That is why burn these Chinese characters. Uh, symbolize the root, the origin, or the most important part of something. And more, uh, this character also shows a mark, but at the top of a tree, representing the tip of a tree or its branch. In modern Chinese, more not only refers to the last part of something, but also implies something uh, small or insignificant. In Thai, it is a verb. Uh, the top part represents a hand, and the bottom part represents fruits, flowers, or plants. So the meaning of this character is to pick fruits, flowers, or tree branches. So from now on, whenever you see our characters with this wood standard component, you will no longer feel strange, and you can pretty much uh, guess it has something to do with trees, plants, or wood. The next basic element is shui water. And the standard components uh, related to water uh, are two dot, three dot, and four dot radicals. Each of them resembles small water droplets, huh? And for these uh, water rich standard components, you can watch my previous video. Next, let's talk about Huo Fire. As you can see from this character's evolution chart, it is very clear that Huo is a typical pictographic character as well. From the very beginning, it uh, resembled a flame and eventually evolved into current form. The standard component symbolizing the fire is Huo, the same as the character itself. And the characters that uh, contain this standard component are all related to fire. For example, Deng. In ancient China, lamps were lit by igniting oil with fire for illumination. Ran to ignite a fire. Shao, the state of burning. And Ran Shao, these two characters are often used together to mean burning or combustion. Po, cannon. Lu, stove or furnace. Mi, to extinguish a fire. Look at these characters, it describes uh, the act of pouring a hand of dirt or a base of water over a fire to put it out. Yan, flame. Yan, to blaze flames or it means very hot. And this page shows multiple cooking methods. All of them are related to fire. For example, chao, stir fry, dun, stew, uh, kao, grill, zha, deep fry, hui, braise, liu, quick fry with thick, 
gravy, ju, bake or casserole, home roast. And thus, from now on, whenever you see a character with this fire standard component, you will no longer feel strange and you can pretty much guess it has something to do with fire. With fire. And then let's talk about the last basic element, Tu, earth or soil. You see the, in this picture, uh, this is a mound of earth. The character Tu also takes the, this form to uh, symbolize earth or soil. The standard component for earth is symbol, Tu, likewise, straightforwardly repeats itself. In Chinese, characters containing this earth or soil standard component usually refer to things related to land, uh, or buildings, or geographical features. For example, Di. Um, Di refers to land or ground. For example, Da Di, the earth, Di Fang, place. Yuan refers to a, a low wall or fence. The walls in ancient China were built by piling up earth. Fang, ah, this is interesting, this is very interesting. In, in ancient China, uh, this referred to uh, residential areas uh, within a city. And you see, you see this? Uh, this is a map of Chang'an, the capital city of Tang Dynasty in China. Um, on it, uh, there are, you can see there are many small rectangular grids, most of which represent a Fang. And this is the 3D model of Chang'an. It is so beautiful, huh? And Tang. Uh, Chang refers to open spaces or places where uh, people uh, gather and play, such as Changdi venue or Guangtang square. Uh, Cheng refers to uh, fortified walls around a city and by extension, the city itself. For example, Cheng Shi, city, Cheng Qiang, city wall. B, um, B refers to a wall, uh, especially a heart or sturdy one, for example, Qiang Bi, wall. And D, uh, D refers to an elevated earth or uh, stone structure built along a riverbank to uh, prevent flooding. For example, He Di, riverbank, Hai Di, sea wall. And Ping, um, Ping refers to a flat grassland or a plaza. Tang, Tang refers to a pond created by uh, excavating earth often used for fish farming or irrigation. For example, Yu Tang, fish pond, Shui Tang, water pond, or Shi Tang, pond. So a quick recap. When we look at this soil standard component from this novel perspective, you will find it much easier and more funny to remember, huh? Remember all the characters from this family. And from now on, whenever you see a character with this uh, earth or soil standard component, you will no longer feel strange and you can pretty much guess it has something to do with land or buildings. So after uh, looking at these five basic elements, let's take a look at an interesting character, Zhao. On the left, we have fire standard component, and on the right, the earth, the soil standard component. So it combines both fire and earth elements. So what is it? Please guess it. So bingo, it is a Chinese old style stove. In ancient Chinese kitchens, the cooking area looks like this. A platform made of earth with a hole underneath for adding firewood to keep the fire going. Therefore, the Chinese character saw directly combines the elements of fire and earth to express the meaning of stove. It is a, a very vivid representation, huh? And moreover, let's take a look at something even more interesting. Uh, just like Lego, not only can different standard pieces uh, be combined and assembled, but the same standard pieces can also be stacked on top of each other, huh? This is also true in Chinese characters. And you see, uh, when we take the characters or standard components for um, Jing, a metal gold, Mu, Shui, wood, Shui, water, Wu, fire, and Tu, earth or soil. Copy each of them three times and stack them uh, together. Each of them looks like a pyramid, huh? So three Jing, three metal gold characters placed uh, side by side form this character, Xing, which is commonly used to symbolize wealth and accumulation of money. And three Mu, three uh, tree wood characters uh, form Sen, which means a dense forest. And three shui, three water characters from Niao, de uh, describing a vast body of water. And three hu, three fire characters from Yan, referring to uh, brightness, flames, or an intense blaze. And three tu, three earth or soil characters from Yao, used to describe tall mountains or large mounds of earth. So it is very clear, huh? Uh, the more standard components are stacked, the deeper the meaning becomes. This is perfectly aligns with our intuition, huh? Uh, and this reminds me of uh, carefree and joyful childhood days when I used to play with the, these building blocks. 
So they are what I want to share with you today about these five basic elements in Chinese Taoist philosophy, Jing, metal gold, wu, tree wood, shui, water, huo, fire, and tu, earth or soil. And there are corresponding standard components and the Chinese characters that contain these standard components. And as we uh, discussed last time, standard components are like uh, just like English uh, suffixes and prefixes. They give the direction to the meaning of Chinese characters which contain them. And I hope this trick helps you understand and remember Chinese characters more effectively instead of learning Chinese characters in uh, isolation or disconnected from one another. We could remember them uh, and study them in clusters, groups, or as family. And this way you will get twice the result with half effort. And by the way, in the demonstration I just gave, I mentioned so many examples characters. Don't feel pressured. You absolutely don't need to master everything at once. All of the examples uh, are just give you a sense, a sense of how things work, give you a unique perspective, and give you an effective method. So that next time you come across these standard components, you won't feel uh, unfamiliar or uh, intimidating. You will be able to use this method, uh, remember new characters more quickly, and that's the goal. That's the goal. Learning should be enjoyable and don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't expect to um, memorize all of these characters. That's absolutely unnecessary. As I said, I'm a pragmatist. Learn what you need when you need it. And that's all for uh, this episode. The time is always so quick. If you enjoy it, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to have a comment below and tell me what you find most, what you find particularly difficult during learning Chinese. I'll help you tackle it. I firmly believe that for every challenge, there's always a solution or solutions. Thank you very much once again for your support and see you in next episode. Ciao, ciao.